So then when the massacre happened, in part of it, the story is that Bridget ran upstairs. Now their stairs must have had a door behind it because Johnny O'Connor went to follow her and she closed the door so then he went and hid back under the bed. So they didn't realize that he was here. So the night of the massacre, there was probably 35 to 40 men from the Vigilant Society that got together. They came to the Donnelly household. They came in through the door in the summer kitchen. James Carroll came in by himself first. He was the constable and he um, handcuffed Tom Donnelly and got the rest of the family up. And then at a certain signal, everybody came in. And so uh, we don't really know to this day whether it was um, their intent. I don't think it was their intent to murder the family. I think it was their intent to scare them and try and convince them to move away from Bedolph Township. And um, so did mob mentality take over? Had they been drinking and they got carried away? And then the next thing you knew, the whole family had been massacred, except for Johnny O'Connor that they didn't realize was here and was hiding under the bed and managed to escape. So he was the lone witness of the massacre. So this would be the bedroom probably where Jim uh, Donnelly slept and Johnny O'Connor was there for the night. They had picked Johnny O'Connor up so that he could look after the animals and the farm the next day while they were in Granton at court. They were going to court over the fire of the Patrick Ryder's barn that they were being blamed for. During the massacre, Bridget ran upstairs and Johnny O'Connor tried to follow her up the stairs, but Bridget slammed the door in his face, so he turned around and went back and hid under the bed. And then when the vigilantes left, he stayed as long as he could, but they had set fire to the log cabin, so at one point he had to get out and he ran across to the neighbors then to get help. So this is what we call Lucan's first Zamboni. So back in the day, all the boys would have to get a long shovel and they would go around the ice and they'd scrape all the snow off. And then Wilf Hodgins would come with this drum filled with hot water and he had to walk backwards so he didn't walk on the part that was flooded and he would flood the ice with this barrel.